Over this past weekend, I was listening to Still Small Voice, and after listening to her, the Holy Spirit inside of me started getting angry. I started feeling that Claire was making the Lord sound like he didn't know what was going on. She will say that the Lord says he's coming within days or weeks, but then when the days and weeks have gone by, she comes back and says he's delaying his coming. And as if right on cue, I was listening to Swift Passage, and he said the Lord had given him a word about still small voice. He said that the Lord told him that Claire was a false prophet. He said the Lord told him that the prophecy, or that she prophesies lies, and that he does not come down and dance with her. So I prayed and I asked the Lord to give me confirmation about Claire. I said, Lord, if this is true, give me confirmation from someone else. I think it was the next day when I was listening to Barry Scarborough, and he was saying that he had unsubscribed from Still Small Voice about nine months ago because he realized that the Lord was not having these long, drawn-out conversations with her, and he certainly wasn't talking to her every day. At that moment, I felt that I had my confirmation. And just today, I saw a message from Spirit of Blessings, and she was talking about false prophets on YouTube. So I just wanted to tell you all how very sorry I am for recommending Still Small Voice to you. I'd been subscribed to her for months, and the Lord finally opened my eyes to show me that I had gotten suckered by her. I usually have fairly good discernment, but I will admit that the devil has suckered me a few times into traps over the years. I've subscribed to channels on YouTube, and gradually over time the Holy Spirit helps me to weed some of them out. For a time, I subscribed to a woman named Annie. I can't remember what the name of her channel was. Annie was a supposed prophet of God who had dreams and she was supposedly helping the homeless, but she didn't believe in the rapture because she said that the Lord had never shown her the rapture. And all of the things that she said that the Lord showed her was going to happen never did. I can't say that they never will, but when I confronted her about the rapture, she got very nasty with me and she did not show herself to be a true child of God. At that same time, I was also subscribed to Anita Fuentes. I often disagreed with many of the things that Anita had said, but I felt that she was very passionate for the Lord. She didn't believe in the rapture either. Eventually, I began to get more away from her channel. Then I saw that she was begging people for a million dollars to buy property on the East Coast. She said that the Lord was telling her to buy this property. But for one thing, if the Lord really wanted her to have the property, he would have provided a way for her to have it. And second, the Lord would never have told her to buy this property if he was getting, right to, if he was getting ready to destroy America. And if the, if the economic collapse was coming, and if the East Coast was going to suffer a tsunami, there is no way that the Lord would have told her to buy this property on the East Coast. Then just recently... Anita put, a, put out a message to all of her listeners telling them that they should be sending her money for all that she does, and if they don't support her, they're all going to hell. To me, that does not sound like a child of God. She's sounding like all of these church pastors who preach every Sunday morning about tithes and offerings, and then condemning their congregations and making people feel guilty if they don't give everything that they have. That's not godly. Spirit of Blessings said that she received a word from God stating that Anita Fuentes was raised up by him to be a watchman, but she's gone astray. However, he plans to use her in the tribulation to lead people to, people to salvation. If that is true, then we need to pray for her. I don't want you to think I'm here to call anyone out or condemn anyone. I'm issuing this message because it is very important for us to encourage one another about being careful regarding what we listen to and who we trust. Just because a person says that they are a brother or a sister in Christ doesn't mean that they actually are. There are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing out there, and we must pray for discernment. If what they are saying doesn't line up with God's word, and if what they are saying confuses you in any way, run away from them. That woman Annie that I used to listen to, her messages always made me feel guilty and condemned. No matter how much I was doing for the Lord, and no matter how close to the Lord I had become, Annie always made me feel like it wasn't enough. 
she put out messages condemning people for not doing everything possible for the homeless. But the other day, as I was thinking back upon this, the Lord dropped in my spirit that not everyone is called to do the same things. Not everyone is called to help and advocate for the homeless. Not everyone is called to preach. Not everyone will see visions and dreams. Not everyone is called to be a watchman. Each and every person has a calling and a talent or talents that they are born with. For each and every person, that calling and that talent is different. In the Word, Paul tells us that he would rather every one of us speak in tongues. But then he acknowledges that not everyone will speak in tongues and it is better to prophesy because through prophecy you can edify the whole church or body of Christ. Then he goes on to tell us about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how some will have the gift of speaking in tongues, some will have the gift of prophecy, some will have the gift of teaching and preaching, some will have the gift of evangelism, some will have the gift of being apostles, which is to go out and be more of a shepherd of the flock, I guess. So don't let someone tell you what you should or should not be doing for God. Let the Lord tell you what you are called to do. And again, be very careful about who you are allowing to lead you in your walk with Christ. Pray for discernment in all things. And really, the only one who should be leading you is the Lord himself. It is good for us to give one another encouragement and to help one another stay on the right path. It is good for us to admit to one another when we've made a mistake. And it is good for us to let one another know when we are in error. But in all of these things, we must walk in love. And on another note, a few weeks ago, I put out a video telling you all about a, flat, or a few flash dreams that I had had regarding the ark and the people and animals that were lining up getting ready to go in and how I saw three or four lions getting ready to pull the ark into the water. Well, just a day or two after I saw all of that, my dad told me that he was out for a walk and while he was out walking, he heard waves rolling in. Now, we don't live near water. I live in Michigan and we're an entire county away from Lake Erie and we're several counties away from Lake Michigan. I'm in the southeastern portion of Michigan closest to Toledo, Ohio. So my dad was not hearing local waves rolling in and he wasn't even sure why he was hearing these waves. I believe that the Lord was confirming to my dad and to me that the spiritual ark is getting prepared and getting ready to leave, which means we're going to be leaving soon. Oh, and before I forget, the day I had been watching YouTube and getting confirmation about Still Small Voice, I was sitting on my couch watching YouTube on my TV, and I was listening to a man's testimony about dying and receiving a message from the Lord, and about how the Lord was going to, or how he wasn't going to let him stay because he had plans for this man. And just then, the man continued talking, but I began to see a vision. I've never had a vision before, so this was all new to me. As I began to have this vision, I could no longer hear the man talking. I just felt the Lord come up behind me and give me a hug. He just wrapped his arms around me, and I could feel his rope. It was made of a thick linen, and it felt warm. But I thought, it could also probably be cool in hotter temperatures. After a few moments, he took his arms off of me, and he began to walk away. I watched him as he was walking away in his white robe toward the sun as it was setting, which I think is very significant, like the sun is setting on this time that we're in, or this day is ending. And I think he could feel me watching him. He turned back toward me, and he said, I'll be back soon. And that was the end of the vision. So that is just yet again another confirmation that the Lord is definitely coming to catch away his bride soon. Pray about these things and ask for confirmation. If any of you get confirmations for the ark leaving and for the Lord saying he'll be back soon, please post a comment here. Most of the time I disable the comments because I don't have the time to moderate and to weed out all of the bad comments, but I'm interested in hearing what you have to say regarding the confirmations. And if you are a subscriber of Still Small Voice, unsub right now, stop listening. She's leading people astray, and that saddens me. Pray for Claire, and as many have said, there's a possibility that she doesn't even know that she's not hearing from the Lord, but from the enemy instead. It could be that she's as deceived as the rest of us are. We've got to stick together in this. Each and every day is becoming more of a struggle. We've got to hold on until the end. As I always say, 
Continue to have strength, faith, and endurance until the Lord comes. I believe the end is in sight. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Maranatha. And by the way, um, this past weekend, for a couple of days, I was actually feeling very deeply in my spirit about um, something getting ready to take place. <sighs> Basically, I, I was feeling that I needed to pray for the unsaved um, because I felt that uh, things were getting ready to take place very quickly here. So that was actually the reason why the Lord had come and wrapped his arms around me and gave me that hug because I was just feeling very sorrowful in my spirit. Um, I have this gift of agape love that the Lord had given me years ago when I first got saved and that causes me to feel very deeply for people who are unsaved. Um, and so I'm constantly, I guess, saddened by what I know they'll go through. Um, and I was especially saddened this past weekend for a couple of days because I, like I said, I just feel very strongly in my spirit that uh, something's getting ready to take place very quickly here. So I wanted to encourage you all to pray for the unsaved um, and just keep having strength, keep having faith. Pray that the Lord's mercy will be on the unsaved because those who are going to be left behind here are going to go through some very, very awful things. Um, so just make sure that you keep them in your spirit when you're praying. Thank you.